Today we're going to learn how to write a function enclosure. A function is a form like any other, and the first thing in the form is here this fn, which of course stands for function. Function has arguments. In this case, we've passed an empty list. And notice that instead of parentheses, as we see in everywhere else, this is a vector. Vectors are used in this case just to make the code a little easier to read. It sort of sets the argument list apart from all the other things, which are all parentheses themselves. And Clojure tends to shy away from using parentheses in contexts where the first item isn't the thing to be evaluated. This is just a list of arguments. They're not evaluated in any way. So let's just make our function return a string. We have a function. It has a type 2 but the type is an anonymous class that was created by the function declaration. So when we call function with our no arguments and our hello string, it gives us a function back. To actually evaluate it, we'll have to do what we always do in Clojure, which is make it the first item of a parenthesis delimited list. And here we've seen an important property of Clojure, which is common to every functional language in that functions are just values. They're first class, they can be passed around. Here we've just used a function, as an item in a list. And we can make this easier to use by using def as before and giving it a name. So now we have a function with a name, hello, and we can call it on various things. And we see up here this fully namespace declaration. And learn closure is the name of our namespace. We see that up here. And hello is the name of the function. So if we were to import this module from somewhere else, we might call it like this. And now we can just call our function in a very standard way. Before I move on to more advanced functions, there's a special syntax for anonymous functions, which just uses a octothorp in front of a list of things. And to do this, we'll put string hello. And this will accomplish the same thing as before. So it's more typical to assign a function and create it at the same time. And for that, we use defin. So it has a name still, it has a list of arguments, and it does a thing, which in this case is to return the string hello. And notice that we haven't put any return here. You might expect in other languages that we have to explicitly return a value. But in Clojure, like in most lists and many functional languages, every function is expected to return a value. And so every function will return the last statement in it. We can have arguments in functions, of course. We can make a personalized greeting. By the way, stir here is string, and it will concatenate any string arguments that we pass it, and coerce them to strings if we want to pass a number. But right now, we can see that we can make a function that accepts a name and call it on any value that we pass it. We'll return that. And of course, functions can take any number of arguments. By the way, I've just typed a comma, which is something I do out of habit because Clojure is not the only language I write. But commas are treated as white space in Clojure. So I'll leave it in just to show that Clojure could care less whether or not I typed a comma there. And we can try hello again. And now our person has another reflexive comma and another thing. And we can take the comma out. So that's a fun feature. If you really want a list like a hash map declaration or something to use commas, you can if you think it makes it easier to read. Or you can not if you don't feel like it. A function defined with defin can also take a optional doc string. So we can just modify our function from before and say greets a person named name with their title. This will evaluate as before. To use a doc string, we'll have to import a module from another namespace. The namespace is called clojure.repl, and a REPL is read eval print loop, and that's what Clojure people call the console that evaluates code as you type it in, or as you pass values to it. We're going to refer doc, because that is the function that will display a doc string. Now we can call doc on our function and see documentation appear on the console. And down here is the doc string that we pass, as well as the arguments that the function takes and the namespace name of the function. It's also possible to view the documentation of a function right within your editor. To do that, put your cursor over the name of the function that you'd like to see documentation for and press Control D. Now this is Control D on a Mac, not Command D. To hide the documentation, press Control D again. You can view documentation for just about any closure symbol. You can define functions that take multiple variadic arguments. And there are two ways to do this. The first is a function that takes any number of arguments and packs them up into a collection. 
So here we'll define a function hello that takes any number of arguments and concatenates them. It concatenates them without spaces, but you can see that all the arguments are present in the args variable that we applied as our function parameter, and you can work with them however you need to. The other way to define a multivariatic function is to just define differing implementations depending on the number of arguments. So in this case, we'll write a function that if passed no arguments, we'll say hello world, and if passed a name, we'll greet that person. We can see that works as expected. Another common pattern in Clojure is to recursively define multivariatic functions. So here, if we instead say hello world, then we have effectively provided a fault argument for the name parameter in this implementation. And now we can change the greeting and the function will act the same. Another thing we can do with Clojure is to destructure arguments to our functions. And that refers to unpacking a list or a map that we pass to a function to extract only part of the contents there and then work with those and simplify our implementation a bit. So say we defined a function that accepted a configuration instead of parameters explicitly and then used the configuration to pull a name value out. We can see that that works fine, but we could also move the extraction of the parameter to within our arguments. And the syntax for doing this, it looks like a map. We'll say name is the variable that we want to assign the structured value to. And the keyword is the key into the map that we want to extract. So this is a bit backwards from defining a map. We'll see that the key comes after the var that we are putting this into. But we no longer need the config. We can just say name. And this works as well. We'll see that it changes. And if we did also require the config, we could use this special key to provide access to it. But we don't need it in this case, so we will take that out. We can also do this with vectors or lists, which both use this vector syntax. And say we had a two element vector that was being passed here, and we wanted to break it down into two separate variables without using a let inside our function. And let's say we're passing a name and a title. Now we'll use both of those, and we can call this function on a data structure. Let's say a vector, which contains a name and a title and pulls both out and applies them to our concatenated string as above. So those are just some ways that we can define functions in Clojure.